first is hyperreality. This design trend blurs the line between reality and simulation. And when employed well, it makes a website feel impactful more than reality itself. Introduced by Jean Boudriard, it lets you combine media, art, and culture on a website where the simulation of those seem more compelling than the real experience. And this is something we've seen more and more with the rise of AI. With Google Trends saying that the search for AI design tools has increased by 8,500%. And it makes sense how AI is driving hyperreality with its creative takes on what can otherwise be out of this world. We see things like NPC characters on TikTok, a 1990s styled website with big red boots, a cookie website where your mouse actually is eating bits of the food, or even a simple website about a tropical forest where the movement and animation of the images feel like you're being immersed in that location. So if you want to implement hyperreality in your website, do three things. Create interactive 3D elements, things that users can manipulate, click on, and interact with to change the state or appearance, making for a more immersive experience. Two, create surreal animations, ones that alter the perception of the digital environment. Things like overlays and dynamic backgrounds are a way to increase that immersion and otherworldliness. And three, create unexpected design features, things that are playful in terms of design, such as warped videos, animated elements, and things that just surprise users, making the online experience feel more dynamic and intriguing. Okay, let's move on to the second web design trend. I'm gonna call this design trend a human touch. Let me start with some background. Designers like to add a touch of warmth and humanity to a digital landscape that sometimes looks artificial. And this is done through things like illustrations and handwritten fonts. Therefore, websites that properly use a human touch implement things like ripped edges, unpretty drawings, hastily drawn figures, and illustrations made by hand. Let me show you some examples. The first is the dinner ladies. You'll notice the handwritten logo with illustration and artwork, which also looks very hand-drawn and warm with these reds and vibrant colors. You can even feel the human touch in the videos where they're more personal and less about the product itself. Another example is by the Earth Alliance. This one uses a number of hand-drawn illustrations, things like loose pencil sketches to add a bit of style and human touch to the website. Then they're super Keen. Another website which effectively adds a real photos of different things like nuts and trees together with illustrations that look cute and hand-drawn. And it's this kind of contrast between the cartoons and the real-world objects that make this digital website look way more approachable and relatable. So here are three ways that you can add a more human touch to your own website. Use hand-drawn illustrations, use a script lettering, and add subtle gradients and depth to your website designs. Moving on, the third web design trend is elevated brutalism. It's been around for years and comes to life when you use single dominant colors with very familiar fonts and well-defined borders. And in 2024, we saw more versions of its style being emerged as the more raw minimalist principles of brutalism is being refined with aesthetics in web design. Let me show you two examples. The first one is from the beverage brand Lessy. This one here is an unapologetic web design that immediately shows you the product with harsh lines, sections, and bold text. Another example is SAR Studio. While it is a bit more minimalistic, it uses a grid with a no-nonsense design to immediately showcase its elements for its couches and tables. If you're wondering how to implement your own elevated brutalism, do these three things. First, less is more, which means stick to a limited color palette things like black, white, and red, with maybe bold text. Second, be creative with your constraints. Things like system fonts, Times New Roman, Arial, give more impact, especially when you increase their size. And third is use high impact photography, because a lot of these designs are really dependent on high quality photos and adding them to a site adds additional emotional weight and visual appeal. Number four is interactive whimsy. Since it's so much harder these days to create a website that stands out, a website needs so much more. It needs playful moments, fun moments, moments of motion and scrolling that interact with the users and lots of animation. Therefore, interactive whimsy is a designer's playground where they make no apologies to be playful with fonts and the abundance of animation and the type of interactions users can have. Take a look at the website Next.js.conf. Here you can interact with 3D objects, moving elements into place to fill out the word next. 
and you do this alongside other users as well. It's not only fun, but you get an idea of what's going to be covered in the conference in a more engaging way. Another example is from Bruno Simons, which created this 3D website where you actually drive a car through an interactive world to get a better idea of what Bruno provides as a designer. I also like the website from Welch Fruit Snacks, which has floating 3D elements that move and change scale as you scroll through the page, interacting with different elements and making for a more fun page to view. And here are three different ways you can add more interactions to your own website. First, use subtle animations. Add them to things like scroll effects and hover effects to add interactions without overwhelming a user. Secondly, try to use a neutral base when creating animations. This means use light grays and soft colors so that the overall design still looks clean while elements can pop out in interactive manners. Otherwise, a website can feel crowded and overwhelming for a user, meaning it actually pushes them away rather than drawing them into the site itself. Third, consider how to use your text and fonts in more interactive ways, such as adding movement or stretching when a user is viewing the page. The fifth design trend is digital sustainability, and it has to do with different ways that you can leave less of an environment impact through your digital work. An interesting fact is that 3.7% of all the world's emissions are made from all the internet and systems behind it. And to compare, this is about the same percent as the aviation industry. So being able to create eco-friendly websites is quite important, especially for web design and creating things that cut down on energy use. And it's interesting the different ways that you can actually achieve this. For example, simply creating images that are more optimized and smaller in size means they utilize less traffic. Less energy is required to access them from your own mobile device as well as from the device they're being sent from, which means we don't have to burn as much fossil fuels to recharge that energy. While this might not seem like a big impact, across millions of devices, even billions across the whole world, it does have a significant impact. For example, the website C40 Cities recently revamped their website with eco-friendly device practices, and they were able to reduce CO2 emissions from 6.7 grams to 0.34 grams per homepage view. This was a decrease of 90% and their website loads in less than 1.2 seconds with a score of 98% on Google Lighthouse. Here are three ways to include digital sustainability into your own sites. First, use energy efficient fonts. These are often system fonts rather than custom fonts, which reduce the amount of HTTP traffic. Second, add dark mode. Dark mode designs use dark colors with high contrast. Since muted or dark pixels utilize less power, especially on OLED screens, it means that you save on battery power and utilize less energy. Third and finally, test your web designs to see if they actually work quite well in terms of the carbon footprint. You can do this through a website called Website Carbon, which calculates that footprint for you. The sixth website design trend is maximalism. First, let me give you some background. Dietrich Rams had a famous quote that said, good design is as little design as possible. However, unfortunately, this design trend disagrees. Maximalism is one that started in 2023 and has only grown since 2024. It's thinking loud, having strong photography, colors, excessive topography, and a strong visual point of view. While adding more and more seems excessive, we're still waiting for maximalism to reach its market saturation. But so far, clients and consumers keep wanting more and more. Just take a look at Molly's website about her book and cooking. You can see how strong the appeal is for all these colors, movements, and text. The website is loud and proud with very strong bolds, pictures, and colors with text that looks completely unique. And it's one that is unforgettable, especially in a world where all websites seem to look the same. If you're wondering how to add maximalism into your own web design trends, do these three things. First, add a bold topography that is unique and different. Add vibrant colors to your color palettes, such as a neo pink or electric blue, and add scale just adding the dramatic size that text and images can be, especially when they're next to each other. The next design trend is heritage revivalism. And this one is one that I kind of like because it stems from reusing old visuals from an earlier time of life. The kind of designs you'll see in here are very hand-drawn. They're very visually made as if they were from the 17th or 18th century. A great example of a brand and website utilizing this well is Burberry. The brand revived its cobalt blue sheriff word mark with a 122 year old equestrian knight as a motif and it broke through the crowd of fashion especially using sans serif as well here are three ways you can add heritage revivalism into your own web designs you can add old style fonts 
Fonts like Garamond or Calson, which are historic for their vintage feel, or for example, more decorative fonts as well. You can use specialist glyphs and vector elements to create unique monogram logos. Second is the use of colors that are toned and neutral. Colors that are more like burgundy or navy blue, jewel tones, and even subdued neutrals. And third, using patterns and illustrations. Look for vintage floral patterns ornamental frames, or even decorative elements which make you feel like you're in the past. Another design trend which is similar is the 80s excess trend. This one is kind of a spin-off of maximalism as well as the one previous about heritage revivalism. For this design trend, you'll see 80s style geometric shapes, pastel colors, and a number of typefaces all at once. It often also includes things like a grainy background pictures or textures, and soft colors or gradient use with vintage photos and styling. It's like looking at an old magazine and its layout and the thin motifs and bordered images. The type of choices are very retro and you're seeing a lot of neutral semi-serif fonts as well as serifs paired in. Pepsi is a great brand that has embraced this design philosophy and added a lot of their mid 80s visual identity into their new branding and campaigns. If you're wondering how to add it into your own web designs, do these three things. First, add grainy background textures. Add grain to add that vintage look. Second, add soft single color gradients. Single gradients with pastel pinks or light peaches. Third, use the magazine layout technique where you can frame different images with lines and bordered sections. And fourth, use retro fonts. You can pair fonts with serif and sans serif fonts, such as Benton Modern as well as Optima for a balance between accessibility and readability. Number nine for our design trends is a dial-up design. This is a very nostalgic type of design that introduces the early web where a lot of niches and online communities had very few brand guidelines. Today, web designers are always tapping into experimentation of early designs from things like the GeoCities era, Y2K, and MS Paint and Microsoft Word in their art. As an example, Gen Z have a MySpace-inspired app called NoSpace, which utilizes really simple design. And another example is the website Boys Club, which uses a lot of that dial-up design with the grainy textures in the background with some operating system like a user interface. If you wanna tap into this trend, do these three things. First, use pixelated fonts. Not my favorite, but they emulate that low resolution that used to be part of the early web. Second, use bright and brash colors. In the past, monitors couldn't display millions of colors like they do now. So you Using a palette color that has bright neon colors and contrasting backgrounds with colors like black, neo green, and blue and pink are more vibrant, but also more 90s. And finally, add elements of the early web UI. Things like retro buttons, brevels, shadows, and a large blocky fonts and capitalized text and animated GIFs, because all of these are a throwback to the early web. Now that we've looked at retro, 80s, 90s, dial-up, we're going to look to the future for our final design trend called Retro Future Feminine. Because the internet is getting cuter. It's getting more of a Japanese aesthetic. And this hyper-feminine trend with glittery, covered heart, bows, and butterflies is being incorporated into designs. This girly trend emerged in 2023, and it's a counterpoint to the traditional corporate web design tropes we often see. Three parts behind this design, including using Y2K fonts, which are futuristic, combined with retro-inspired nostalgia to create a modern look. Two, a softer color palette, which is more like mint green and baby pink and lavender. And third, adding bling to buttons, which is a combination of adding neo green, glitter effects and vintage inspired shapes and making the buttons look like a blend between old and new. Were there any design trends I missed out this year? Let me know in the comments below. I've also linked an article below which goes into all these design trends in more detail, as well as with further examples built on top of Wix Studio, which is often what I'm using to build websites these days. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.